Hey guys, it's Sister Back. Um, welcome to April Patreon. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, pushing rendering once again. Um, so uh, this month what I did uh, was I really, really tried to push myself as far as possible with the rendering of this particular piece. It is a very popular piece. It's, it's been well received uh, because very rarely do I, you know, push the rendering so far close to photorealism. Um, and this is not photorealism. Uh, photorealism is working pixel for pixel with a photograph. Um, so for this painting, I had a, probably a, a minimum of two to three references, um, just back and forth over, over several days, which is something I don't usually do, revisit a painting over several days within a week. Um, actually probably three to four days of, of rendering for this one in sessions, not three or four days of, of hours. Um, and uh, really the biggest challenge of this was learning how to just take a break and come back the next day so that I can find new mistakes because at the end of every single session, what happened was I ran out of knowledge. I ran out of what was left to do. I also obviously ran out of patience for the painting. I, I have energy, tired, fatigue at the, at the end of it because you're, you're just constantly thinking about every single brushstroke. It's a lot of thinking and it's very fatiguing. So the thing that I taught myself to do more uh, is just to take a break, take a take take a, a whole 24 hours if possible before I see the painting again. So I tried my best not to open the PSD. I tried my best not to uh, let myself see the references. Um, I, I, I just didn't, uh, these are the kinds of references where I keep to myself. I don't share them with students uh, because it would mean that I have to look at them. So I kept them away in a file and I didn't look at them until the next day when the, when the, when the 24 hours were up. And every single time, without fail, I found a ton of mistakes um, and a ton of things to do, a whole list of stuff to do, a whole laundry list of edge work that was left undone uh, that the, end of the previous day I didn't, I, I thought was finished. And it, it's weird to me. It's weird that I understand mistakes I can't see, but completion status was, was, was baffling to me because I didn't understand how completion status also needed a break. So if you think about it, completion status is an accumulation of minute little instances of rendering. So small brush strokes that, that, that could be added to something uh, which were missing. Edge work that could have been added between two values which was missing. The things were just still a little bit fuzzy between two major value changes or plane changes, uh, face changes. Um, then there is the contrast. Was the contrast really optimal? Was it really representing a scene uh, inside of a room, space inside of a room? Um, then there was the, the uncanniness of some of the expression that I was doing. So the expression kind of looked a little bit between content and sick, and I didn't want that. I wanted serenity. I wanted calmness. I wanted peace. I wanted beauty. I just wanted to do one time where I, I painted a face that wasn't particularly halfway beautiful, which is a face that I love to draw. Um, I also wanted to uh, just push the push the rendering as far as possible, just for my own, uh, just to measure my own skill level and my improvement. So every single time I thought that I was okay for this session, the painting might be complete tonight. I was wrong, um, every single time. And the biggest uh, the, the factor behind all of this is me using up all the tricks that I that. The, so it wasn't new knowledge. It was the same old basic fundamentals that I had to re-explore the next day. Um, it was just specifically my brain's capacity to uh, find more of the same issue. Um, and sometimes, no matter how hard you're trying, no matter how well you draw, no matter how well you, you, you know your field, it, 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 nothing compares to how a refreshed mind uh, performs. And that's really the, 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 the you know, the, the, the factor behind all this is that you can measure an artist's skill by their single session uh, quality output. But if you really want to measure the artist's skill, you give them a number of days to revisit the same image and you'll see uh, the brain do so much more than it was capable of doing uh, if it was just the single session. Uh, so no matter how good you are, a painterly painting stays painterly. Uh, for one really big reason, if you're having trouble not knowing what to do next, it's because there's no knowledge left. Um, and it may not be knowledge. Let's just say it's not knowledge that's that's gone. Uh, something else is also uh, just completely used up, which is your ability to make decisions. So a decision um, is every single brushstroke is a decision and your brain can only make so many decisions at a time. 
um, a brain that it's, it's, it's scientifically uh, studied as well that a brain only has a set number of decisions it can make in a day in a single day before it becomes completely exhausted before you exhaust that faculty of your mind so we really forget in our exploration of our skill development how important it is to and nurture our brains and to <clears throat> not fatigue our decision making and to prioritize the focal point as much as possible every time we're painting because we're on a clock we're ticking uh, the, the, the clock is ticking and it's a countdown to the point where you're just completely exhausted and I reached this so many times I can hardly look at the painting now as I instruct because it's um it, it's it's so uh, embedded with the process that I dealt with with pushing first of all my threshold how long I was willing to look at the same painting over a number of days and then the 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 in painting session threshold that I was pushing as well how long I lasted between each session how long each session lasted so sometimes uh, this one time I streamed at six hours uh, and that really was pushing it I was very very fatigued I took a massive break after uh, this painting I've actually been on a break because of um, it's it's really really fatigued me it's used up my mind a great deal the output is is, is, is acceptable um, I already see mistakes just from looking at it which is why I've avoided looking at it altogether but um, the but just the the, the, the self-exploration involved in revisiting a painting and then at the same time uh, revisiting it because you want to push the render as far as possible that the, the, the kind of stuff you learn about yourself you really don't find it anywhere else um, it, that's where the real grind is revisiting the same painting which by by session number two has al already become a boring site and you have to revitalize it you have to defibrillate it every single time uh, so the areas that I found the most uh, problematic were uh, the uh, pushing my ability to see the lashes um, as necessary so uh, pushing the ability to in execute the lashes be able to recreate them and not have them take over the painting so this meant a lot of zooming in and out which was another try at my patients another thing was me loving the silhouette of the hair I didn't want to push the hair into the usual stuff that I've been doing lately which is pushing the render of the hair with single brush very blurred brush strokes single pixel width brush strokes that are very very blurred I haven't been doing that um, on this painting I decided not to do that because again I wanted it to be just about the, the hair of the eyebrows and the lashes so that the hair of the eyebrows is a very big deal and every time I revisited the painting I found myself looking at the eyebrows so I knew I had to have the lashes in there and so once I added them in I kept undoing them I kept removing the layer so I caught up the detail of the of the wrinkles of the eye with the eyebrow hairs then I caught up obviously the lashes have to be there they work as a framework and I, I zoom back out and everything looks wrong and try again a new layer of lashes and I kept going back and forth because all I had as the main carrier of the painting after leaving the hair so bold were the eyes if I were to delete the eyes I would have an unfinished painting everywhere else nothing else carried the movement of the reed and it was all about the eyes all about their stare all about the glare of the light um, on the specula the specularities of the light on the eye and so it was a very very big challenge um def just not giving in to the desire to detail the hair so that i could salvage some reed and i could catch up the rest of the reed everywhere else it was very difficult to do that uh so at the end of the day what happened was i uh, opted out of detailing anything else and i kept it all focused only on the eyes uh, so that was one really really big thing that i realized um, if I hadn't taken a break, I would have given in to the desire to detail everything else. If I had not taken a break, I would have tried to get that instantaneous read, that, that session, that, that topical, superficial read um, out from the first session I visited the painting and I would have called it done. Um, but uh, because I took a break, because I, I, I allowed the fatigue to uh, tell me to stop and I stopped and revisited again in another stream, <clears throat> I realized I liked where it was going all the times that I deleted lashes and went back deleted them and went back those were unnecessary because I was feeling that the decision I was making was right to keep the eyes only as the highest focal point um, and the only focal point not just the highest but the only specifically that's the word that troubled me so I was making the right decision there because at the end of the day I was talking about the eyes I wasn't over rendering a nose or anything like that it was still the main focus of a portrait um, so I, I, 
I, I realized I was making the right decision, but I didn't know it at the time because of the amount of fatigue that I had undergone in order to get the render to the level there it was in by the time I was asking the question, where is my focal point and how powerful do I want to make my focal point? Which is an advanced question to ask. Usually students just want to get some symmetry down. They want to get some basic anatomy down. They want to know how to make a, an eye socket work before they're asking all these advanced uh, portrait composition questions. But it doesn't hurt uh, to, to, to think about it just now. Maybe don't ask yourself that question just yet. Your painting isn't complete to that level just yet, but it doesn't hurt to remember that some of your best decisions are made um, when you first see the painting after an extensive break. Um, those are the real decisions. So I realize sometimes when I take a break, I come back, the contrast is so washed out. And that's the, usually the first thing I used to fix. After I started doing that, I realized right off the bat, as I painted, I know I'm gonna revisit this and I know the contrast is gonna be crummy. Let me add the contrast in now before I realize it later. And it always, always ended up paying off. Uh, so you learn things that you need to keep in mind when you're painting next time you start a new painting by taking a break. So every time you take a break, you come back and uh, observe again the same decisions you made, but with a refreshed mind, you realize all the good stuff you did and all the bad stuff you did, and then you notice a pattern. My contrast was always off, my focal point was never strong enough, and I always didn't really think about the presence of the silhouette of the entire head structure against the background. It was always really awkward, something was always off. Um, so apart from this stuff, I always talk about flipping your canvas, making sure you block in. This, this was the biggest challenge uh, that, that, that I dealt with with this painting, just knowing how much contrast I wanted. Um, so at the end, something that really that just kind of saved the day for me was some really, really weird little fact that I added in, a real weird little brush stroke that I added in and I didn't take out. And it's the inner eye corner of the eye that is, um, that the, 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 the eye that is not in three quarter view or not completely compressed, uh, that inner corner of light on the inside of her waterline. Uh, that was just what I needed. And it was, again, another way to enforce the focal point, a way to bring in contrast and not really have to shrink my brush or overload the, 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 the face because I noticed I was overloading it with small brush strokes and I wasn't really uh, utilizing other factors that create a focal point because and only because I really wanted the eyebrow to stay hairy. I wanted it to stay textured. I wanted it to stay very, very feminine and... Um, youthful, not overdone or overdrawn, something a little bit more flat. Uh, it's typical beauty, but it's atypical eyebrow structure for a female. Uh, so I, I wanted that to stay there. I didn't want to take away from that. And having the hairs there in the eyebrow meant that I had to catch up the hair everywhere else and the wrinkles in the eye. Even though I didn't want her to look old, there had to be some level of wrinkling. And that's what I meant by the almost photorealism that I was going for. And I would never have been able to manage all of that tug of war, all of that push and pull between that, that war I had. That it's a real war between all the ways to create detail, shrinking your brush, contrast, or edge work. It was a battle between all those three elements and, and how I could push the eye and maintain the read. Again, without the eyes, just cover the eyes up right now as you're watching. Everything else is super under-rendered. Uh, the only thing carrying the painting is the eyes. And I could have just made it an eye study, but I did want to push the rendering. I did want to push and create something and, and, and complete the painting as much as possible. Uh, so uh, the, the, the not taking a break would have caused a completely different outcome. Not taking a break, the painting would have looked completely different. It would not be what you're looking at right now. Uh, because I took a break, the painting eventually came together. I realized major asymmetry mistakes in my rotation. I realized that the lips were super under-rendered. Like, it was not acceptable for them. I know under-rendered lips are well-rendered, but these were just completely unfinished. It was just brush, num brush stroke number one and number two. That was it. Um, and uh, I had to make sure I had to catch everything up. I did find areas to detail that I did not even see. I did not even fathom the day before. Uh, so I cannot express enough how important it is to revisit your paintings, the ones that mean something to you. If it's just a day study, leave it alone. Don't think about it too much. But if it's an intended masterpiece, there is no way you'll complete the masterpiece if you don't take some breaks. Some masters only need three hours away from their painting and they come back and realize a bunch of mistakes. But me, I wanted to be absolutely sure I made it a full 24 hours and I streamed the next day at 8 p.m. between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. And again, the next day I came back and uh, it all just added up and it um, really paid off. 
Uh, but uh, I, I do see issues now, but they're not issues that I would say are massive, glaring fundamentals or basics issues. They're just little choices that I could have rethought. Um, I, I definitely made a mistake with how thin the brush strokes were around the eyes. I should have tried to manage that a little bit more gently, see what I can pull off with my contrast. But it's been re well received. Um, the, what, a painting being well received isn't a measure of the painting skill. Never measure that based on the fan base. It's always a personal thing, whether or not you feel like the painting has satisfied you. Uh, so it, it, that's definitely, I see it as a, as a, as a success. Uh, but there are some areas that I definitely need to work on. And uh, I've learned a lot from this process. Uh, I hope you can see that painting is an excruciating process. So if you ever find yourself in these kinds of, um, you know, t just kind of tug of war with your illustration, remember that all everyone feels like this. And what happens is how you manage it, how you how you groom this the, the process, and how you make sure that you are adhering to both you as a human and your fatigue and your limit physically and the, and the limit of your brain and making sure you have rest and knowing when to push yourself and that it's not a requirement for rest, but it's a requirement to train. Uh, it's a fine balance knowing when to stop and when to keep going. Um, and this painting was an example of that. I'll see you guys next month. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye.